Welcome to Tech Topics brought to you by Cybervenger. We help keep small businesses stay protected and compliant with cutting edge cybersecurity and IT solutions. Hello everyone, my name is Andy. I'm the managing consultant for Cybervenger. Today we are going further in our deep dive of the NIST 800-171 standard. And we're talking about control 3.1.2. 3.1.2 is a lot like 3.1.1. It deals with user authentication. Only this is the what can those user authentications get you? Like what's the permissions? It talks about that. Whereas 3.1.1, our previous one, just talked about that people need to be authenticated. So there's identify and there's limit. Now the general principle of least privilege access is a bedrock foundation of any cybersecurity. And NIST 800-171 is no exception. And you'll see that everywhere you, you deal with security. This talks a little bit about that. The idea that you could separate different types of users, different groups. Now, it doesn't spell out what groups you have to have or how you have to separate them. So it's kind of up to you. Hypothetically, you could simply have admins and non-admins. And there, you fulfill the requirements. Admins can do everything and non-admins only do X. But that's really, I think, missing the spirit of the control, and you're always better off getting in vibe with the philosophy behind the control. In a business, you don't necessarily need every employee to have access to the same stuff. Imagine you'd have an HR person or an accounts receivable, an accounts payable. You have separation of duties. And if you have controlled unclassified information that you're protecting, or FCI for that matter, any information in your enclave, in your area where that's protected, you probably only need maybe, say, your machinists to build them or your quality control team, uh, maybe like an inspection team or those kind of different roles might have access to CUI specifically. But your accounting, your HR, your sales, your marketing, maybe even a lot of your management team might not necessarily need direct access to that information. So it's important that you define what those roles should be something that works for your organization, but is detailed enough to actually actually accomplish the spirit of the control where you're limiting it to only people that need it. You don't just want one giant CUI group and shove, start shoving people in there every time they need something. You want to break it down. And even if you could limit it by customer, for example, let's say you have Boeing or Northrop Grumman or maybe even directly the DOD, Maybe not every machinist might need access to every different customer. So maybe one group t team has access directly to the DOD if you're doing the business directly. Um, maybe some to the subs where, where you're a sub or something like that. Uh, the, the, the specific, specific example of how you do that is not mentioned in the control and is not directly relevant. But you want to have that kind of thinking. The least privileges that you could give your users to get the job done is always the way to go. And that's really the spirit of this question. So we could do that. Um, once you've user authenticated and you know who they are, you can start applying restrictions to them, whether it's file permission access to a file server or application access. If they don't need access to an application, not only should they not have an account, but you probably don't want that application installed on their computer, right? I mean, licensing, if <laughs> for no other reason, would, would encourage you to do that, right? You don't want to spend licensing you don't need. So that's something to do to honor that uh, requirement. VLANs is another good one. If you have a whole class, whole section of the company that doesn't need to touch CUI, why should they be able to reach those servers? Again, your sales teams, your marketing, your accounting, your HR, maybe even your management, all of that, one section of the network, and maybe your manufacturing team in another section, separated by the network. So even if they had credentials, they couldn't get on there. This is great. The more separation, the more layers you could do, always the better. Certainly, remote access should not be given unless there's a specific requirement for it. You don't need remote access. They definitely should not have it. Uh, there are other things you could do to help restrict access uh, when not needed. You can restrict, at least with Windows and Active Directory, you can limit the time of day that people can log in. I like that one. If you have a day shift, there's no reason for them to show up on the night shift or the graveyard shift. That's a uh, great way to secure your accounts to make sure that people can't get in unless they're at the appropriate time or the appropriate machine. You can also limit access by what machine they're allowed to log on to. So maybe Bob from accounting does occasionally work out in the plant because he used to be a machinist. Maybe his account will only log into that one machinist machine for that one job he still does while they're trying to hire a new guy or whatever. You get the idea. It's the philosophy you want to serve and you want to document it. More importantly, if you're documenting, you don't just want to take a snapshot of what the credentials are 
a simple dump of that is not going to suffice for your system security plan. You want to delegate, you want to write out exactly what the rules are and what access each role should have in your ideal state. That way you have something to compare to when you look at your current state. And that's the kind of documentation that I'm going to be looking for to pass an audit. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That is uh, really control 3.1.2. That is the second and the access control requirements, or I like to call them a group, the kind of group together by, the controls are grouped together by requirements. So that's this requirement. There's 25 in total for this this requirement before we move on to the other 14 requirements. I'm Andy with CyberVenger. Look forward to talking to you in the next one. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has provided valuable information to you. Be sure to share this video with other small business owners to spread the word about the importance of cybersecurity. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you want more information about cybersecurity visit us at www.cybervenger.com.